buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday here on the program. You know what that means? We got a lot to talk about here today. I'm talking a lot. We've got Tammy Sitch being sued over a fatal car accident she was involved in last month led to the death of a 75-year-old man. Lawsuit seeking in excess of $30,000. We were wondering last night, $30,000. Holy smokes. Wrongful death lawsuit with Owen Hart. And this was like 25 years ago. They were asking for $18 million. $30,000 seems low. Well, we got notes from a litigator here who will tell you why that is what was asked for here. We've got Kushida Gunn from NXT. He was beaten up by Von Wagner. They teased that they were going to do a match. And then they didn't, and then he was gone. They even beat him on the way out. They just uh, sent him through a table. Update on Steve Austin, how he's feeling after WrestleMania. We've got a lineup for tonight's NXT. A lot of big matches tonight, including Natalia versus Tatum Paxley. We've got Rampage ratings. We have SmackDown ratings. We have Battle of the Belts ratings. We've got Maria talking about... Tony Khan and Ring of Honor and whether she will be involved in the women's division. And of course, yes, it is Tuesday. And so we have got the Raw recap. What happened on Monday Night Raw last night? What should you go out of your way to see? What should you skip? Well, we'll give that to you here today on the program as well. If you'd like to contact us, text messages 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Email brian at wrestlingobserver.com. You can tweet me at Brian Alvarez. And of course, of course, cameos. F4W online, if you'd like a cameo. Because today is Lima Bean Respect Day. What better reason to get a cameo? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Tammy Sitch being sued over a fatal car accident she was involved in last month led to the death of a 75-year-old man. Peter the Insider reports a civil lawsuit has been filed against Sitch and boyfriend's, uh, boyfriend James F. Penty by the estate of Julian L. Lassiter, who was killed March 25th in Ormond Beach, Florida. The lawsuit is seeking, quote, in excess of 30000 According to PW Insider, it alleges negligence by Sitch. Her boyfriend, Penty, is, quote, vicariously liable for Sitch's actions for allowing her to use his vehicle. Lawsuit further states the Lassiter family has sustained medical and funeral expenses as a result of Sitch's actions. Lassiter's adult daughter has, quote, suffered and will suffer to the future. The loss of her father's companionship, instruction, guidance, and mental pain and suffering as a result of his father's death. Of course, I was asking $30,000. I realize that's the minimum they asked for, but if you think about the... Funeral expenses alone, the medical expenses alone, I mean, right there, you're probably well in excess of of 30000 So Justin here is a, is a lawyer, and he writes, I want to let you know that the reason for the victim's family pleading damages, quote, in excess of 30000 is because 30000 is the minimum amount to allege to get into Florida's circuit court, which is the highest trial court in the state. If the defendants are found liable, the jury will be asked to determine damages, with the actual claim supported by experts, likely in the millions. And, of course, what is, uh, I mean, there's there's many, many sad aspects of this story here. But, I mean, in a situation like this, I mean, the likelihood of, of the family actually getting much money at all, even if it's, you know, determined that, you know, Tammy Sitch needs to pay out like $5 million, I mean, it seems unlikely they're going to get anything even close to that. So, I mean, the whole thing is horrible, and obviously the family wants to go to court. And I would not, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, based on the multiple, multiple arrests, etc., I don't think that uh, Tammy Sitch is probably going to have a very good, uh, very good chance. But who knows? We'll see. So that's the story, and it sucks. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's obviously going to be even worse for her if the toxicology reports come out and she's was inebriated in any way. It's going to be bad enough because of all the, and that's the other, you know, even if she somehow 
is clean in all of this. She's got so many moving violations. She's had so many issues. Uh, and the fact she does not have a license and that has not had one for quite some time and continues to drive on it, uh, regardless of what the toxicology report states, she's way up the creek and deserves to be so. Kushida is gone. 38-year-old left WWE. His contract expired recently. As I noted, his his contract was uh, coming due, and they had a chance to... It doesn't matter, but, I mean, they had that whole thing with uh, Von Wagner beating up Jacket Time, and, you know, he could have beaten Kushida on the way out, but instead they decided, nah, we'll just, you know, put him through a table. So that was the end of Kushida, and it is believed that he will be returning to New Japan Pro Wrestling, which he left three years ago at the age of uh, 35 to make his way in WWE. And, uh, yeah. Did you guys well, see that wedding last night with Akira Tozawa? Yeah, well. I mean, you know, I don't really Tozawa recommend and Mascara Dorada. WWE you know, you, you, thing for, you know. Yeah. Fantasy, you fantasy booked the, you know, Dorada and Tozawa matches when they were first signed, and... They were queer, very quickly slotted where they were, and those things went the way that they did. And it didn't work out for Kushida, but I don't blame him for making the move when he made the move. New Japan, he was not going to be in the mix with the heavyweights. His time as a junior heavyweight had kind of passed, and he was going to be working his way down. And at his age, that was the perfect time for him to come over and give this thing a shot. So I know it's like, well, he wasted three years of his career. No, he, he took a chance, and it didn't pan out because of all the changes that got made with, with WWE and with NXT, and that's that. And he's still got a lot of life left in him. Hopefully he was able to save his body while he was here, and he's going to go back to New Japan. I don't know if he'll be a conquering, returning hero, but he'll certainly be very welcome into the mix, and with all those guys that they have, it's just another name that you can have out there on the scene. It's another name that New Japan can deploy here in America, either on proper New Japan tours or in strong and be in AEW, and go to places and... Take losses and be able to to put over a guy in AEW in a really awesome match and have a purpose and be able to do those things in impact as well as obviously, you know, I'm not just kind of, you know, killing his career here. If they want to have him make another run at the junior heavyweight championship or something like that or in the tag division, even better, get him a young guy, have him team up together and, and, and put some life, a little bit more life into that junior tag division. I think that would be great. You know, I don't like to give career advice, but this guy needs to gain some weight. That's my advice. How about? Because, <laughs> I mean, think about it. If he would have gained some weight in New Japan, he could have moved up to the heavyweight division. If he would have gained some weight in WWE, maybe they wouldn't have treated well, him like a, a child, which is what they always... If you're if you're a small Japanese or, or Asian wrestler, they are going to treat you like you're a little child. And don't right, get mad at second. me. All you have to do is open your eyes. You will be treated like a little child. They did it with Tazawa. They did it with uh, Kushida. Luckily, Nakamura's tall. That's what he had going for him. But, like, other than that, I mean, am I wrong? It, yes. Name one small Japanese wrestler that ever. A Kaintai? Name, name one big one. Nakamura! Had, dude, Kenzo Suzuki cancels him out. All of their characters become You can't cancel children. them out. You asked me to name one, and I named one. You can't but cancel Tijiri, them out because they, of Kenzo Suzuki. Be, because they have a history of doing this. Nakamura is the, the person that stands on the outside of any Japanese character. Has always been a stereotype, a salt thrower, a mist spitter. And none of them have ever really... I mean, Tajiri was the one who who achieved the most. You know? I, I, so I... I I would say that Nakamura, he, he Nakamura, up. but the whole thing is at, at five, he was 35 years old. And with the mix that they had at the time, he was not going to bust in and be an IWGP championship contender and all that stuff, too. And what, what was he going to grow taller than five, eight and a half, five, nine, whatever he actually is? So that's the other problem. He can put on as much weight as he wants. So what? <laughs> you know, what, what, was that that would really our, have helped him on oh the main roster? God. You know what he's going to be able to do, too, is he's going to be able to find that hard cam. Do we have to take everything I say seriously? Obviously, his weight gain is going to help him. 
Actually, it would have helped him in New Japan because then he could move up to the. Because you could be short and heavy and be in the heavyweight division. Just look at uh, Ishii. He didn't even have to put Ishii on any weight. Ishii is way smaller. K- yeah, but they've done that's a kayfabe thing for a long time. He didn't have to put on any weight. Look at Zack Saber Jr. A little, look at he did put at, on weight. That's the exact Yudro. perfect example. Look at Yudro Takahashi. Twenty five pounds I mean, that guy put on. Twenty five you know, pounds. In a way, he didn't put on a bunch of weight when his time was done with the the junior heavyweights and moved up. I mean, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> and by the way. I don't want to hear anyone saying, well, when what about... When you work about... like that, you don't have to put on a lot of weight. I don't want to hear about Io Shirai. I'm talking about men. Do you guys realize... Let me tell you something. You guys know Zelina. You guys know Alexa Bliss. You know how tall these women are? They literally... I'm not even positive. I'm not even positive that Zelina is five feet tall. They say she's five feet tall. Mm. I'm thinking she might be 4'11"-ish. But the point is, <laughs> the rules are different when you are a woman, you can obviously be small. If you're a small uh, Japanese w- woman, you can get over in in WWE if they if they think like uh, Asuka. You know, everyone complains about Asuka, but bro, Asuka had a great great run. Okay, yeah, maybe they didn't you know push her like Becky Lynch or whatever. But on the grand scheme of of you know, you could rattle off a list of names. Asuka did better than the vast majority of them. So being short. And a woman is not a detriment. Being short and a man, if you're a short Asian man, you have zero chance in WWE. Absolutely, positively, zero in WWE. You could make that if you're a short person of any color in WWE. Well, they, at least Ray got over. You got one well, short but, guy I mean, that got on. over. Ray, one. Is the, Ray is the ultimate, you he know. Is. He is the ultimate standout to everything. That's and it is a low a bar. Legend. That's the point. The bar the is low. low. Very Back in low. a moment, Observer Live. Steve Austin feeling good physically after making his return to the ring at Mania 38. He was on the Brew Bound podcast. He said he's feeling 100% physically. He said, I picked up a little bit of a cold the other day. But I'm back home in Nevada. Sunday, I was 100%. And, of course, went back into action on Sunday. Did a little extra physicality as part of the show. But, you know, it's just an exciting time for me to go back to a business I really love. I never thought I'd be back in the ring. But there we were, headlining main event for WrestleMania Night 1. Truly an honor to be out there and really excited to be able to, uh, just like I've been able to drink our beer, Broken Skull IPA, out there in the ring. A couple of years ago, we had a lot of exposure from that. Just a real proud moment. Because when El Segundo Brewing and myself decided to come out with a lager, which is what everybody was wanting, which is really sad. He's plugging all of his stuff. I want to know how you're feeling, brother. I know you got beer. He said, if you would have told me, hey, man, you're going to be part of WrestleMania 38. Not only that, you're going to main event night one. I would have said you're full of it and you're crazy. And there I was in Dallas, Texas, headlining main event on day one. So never say never. But I would really imagine within the scope of that show, that's going to be a big show in a big time city. It'll be a two night event again. So I'm not, I'm sure I'm done wrestling per se, but as a part of WWE, I can't imagine I would not be there in some capacity. And I'm not booking myself on the show because I don't book myself on this past one, but it's a Vince thing. And he says, if he gets the call, he'll be there. So You'll see more of Steve Austin down the road as they need to sell those tickets for two nights. Tonight's NXT, everybody. <laughs> you hate him. Matty versus. Beer, but uh, does he do any Patreons or uh, any cameos? I don't know. You should look it up, dude. Why don't you so look I'm it up while right I now. read this uh, NXT lineup? Jerry got... Springer, $101 right now. That's it for Jerry Springer, $101? Well, it's cut from 135 apparently. But Maria Menounos, though, uh, seen all over WWE programming with big events, $200 plus, it says. Well, I suppose they'll probably only give you about uh, 30 seconds. So, mm. Here's the updated lineup for this Tuesday's NXT. Natty versus Tatum Paxley. Sarai will face Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> Is that the only match they have with those two? Well, they and had Carmelo time to work on it. Hayes will face Santos Escobar. That's the lineup for the show tonight. We got ratings. So Rampage, which aired earlier, 4 o'clock on the West Coast. 482,000 and a .22 in 18 to 49. And I realize that people look at those numbers and they talk about how horrible it is and there was a world title match and everything like that. That's actually a great number. For that time slot going head-to-head with the NBA, that's actually an, a very, very good number there. SmackDown, uh, 2.1 million, 
and a .48 in 18-49, which was down 20% from the previous week. Lowest rating SmackDown has done in that demo since July. That also a result of the NBA. And then Battle of the Belts, 527,000, and a .18 in 18-49. to 49. So, uh... Significant competition again, NBA. NBA is killing everybody, so when you see the raw numbers, I mean, they're probably going to be down as well. A playoff game on ESPN head-to-head, 3.6 million, and a 1.25 in 18 to 49. And on ABC, there was another game, 4.5 million head-to-head, and a 1.33 in 18 to 49. So, I mean, you got two options. Either do all you can and have championship matches or you just give up. So they they decided to fight, and uh, that's how they did. So there you go. And then, of course, well, we'll get into Raw here in a moment. Let's do some feedback here because I want to make sure I got plenty of time for Raw. Jacob here says, I have a feeling a fair few folks will have tuned out of Raw after hour one to catch the two-episode premiere of Better Call Saul's final season. So uh, if you uh, see the raw numbers and it's a big first hour and then it collapses, that could be the reason. Because Daylight Savings Time, hour two should be uh, rated higher than hour one this week. But I guess we'll uh, we'll see. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. Whatever is on your mind, let me know. So this is a good question that I brought up with Dave last night. Actually, a lot of... uh... (laughs) Remember yesterday we were talking about everyone's name being changed and all that weirdness, and now he's Theory and not Austin Theory? Yes. I was watching that wedding, and I thought, God, Reggie's got no last name, and Tamina's got no last name, and they only call him Tozawa. I I remember the last time they called him Akir Tozawa, so he's got no first name. So... I was trying to figure out the whole marriage thing, like, you know, who's taking whose last name, and did Dana lose a last name? Because now she's married to Reggie, who has no last name. Is she now just Dana? Or is is Reggie going to take Dana's last name? So now he's Reggie Brooke. And then, of course, there's, you know, Tazawa has, he has no first name. Tamina has no last name. So I guess, I guess Tamina has to be Tamina Tazawa. And Tazawa's just Tazawa. Not really. You could do the whole, like, you know. Well, Tazawa can't take her last name. Named, she has no last they, name. Yeah, but remember, like, you know, when the, the the cutesy thing that they were doing, you push somebody's name together, maybe they can be, like, you know. Not this crap. Tamzawa or something but, like that. You know, that. another thing I was thinking of. You know, uh, uh, Sasha mm-hmm. and... Uh, and Banks, uh, yes. Yes, Sasha Banks, obviously. I don't know. And, and uh, Naomi. Mm-hmm. They've had, they're called the, uh, what's her name? The Boss and Glow Connection or something like that? <laughs> yes, or something, yeah. And, you know, they had a couple of other th- of, of those as well. And it's just funny because this all stems from the late 90s when The Rock and, uh, and Mick Foley were the Rock and Sock Connection. And if you recall... That wasn't a cool name. That was that was mankind coming up with a stupid name for himself in The Rock, which was comedy. But as time has passed, now it's like, oh, that was a cool name. Now we're going to come up with our own cool connection. And all these dorks have some such-and-such such connection name. Oh, my God. Remember the uh, old NWA jobber tag team, the Cruel Connection? I remember the Maybe Cruel Connection. bring that one back. You should start using Express more. But anyway, uh, this person's talking about... Uh, you ruined it for everybody. Oh, by the way, that was another weird one. I know we're talking about Raw a lot here. I'll do the report in a minute, but... What, chop and roll dude, out? Dude, I, I know they like to do this, but when they're doing the ring announcements and they're like, uh, you know, hailing from, uh, you know, wherever, Finn Balor, the United States champion, and his opponent, Theory... And they put the word theory on this. I'm like, God, mm-hmm. this is so, it doesn't matter, but it's so just weird. Oh, hey, Wit, come on in. Theory's in a championship match. I'm like, what? 
Yeah, I th theory. I thought Educated Guess was going to get the next shot. What? You have a theory? No, his name. Theory. Theory who? He doesn't have a name. It's just theory. Can you imagine? Of course, no one has anyone else in the family that watches wrestling with him, so this is all just made up. But then the other thing, if I may continue, because mm -hmm. I was thinking about this last night. All right. So they, they had uh, uh, Braun Breaker, Rex Steiner was his name. Yes. And then uh, right before he debuts on television, they changed his name to Braun Breaker. Such a stupid name. Uh, straight out of Sleepy Hollow. So Braun Breaker gets his name, and it's like, God, what is Braun Breaker? And they got to spell it weird, two Ks, because, you know, it's 1994 or whatever. Surprised they didn't put a Z in there. Braun Breakers. Put a Z on the end. But anyway, so they give him this new name, and, and it's like, why is his name Braun Bra Why isn't he Rex Steiner? That's so... And then you hear, oh, well, you know, they're, they're mad at Scott Steiner. Then you watch the TV, and they're not allowed to say... He's the son of Rick Steiner. But they call him the dog face gremlin. He does all the same moves. They they say, you know who is, but they won't tell you. I'm like, God. So finally, finally, they actually make a deal. They get on the same page with Scott Steiner. And then they announce the Steiners are going into the WWE Hall of Fame. And so as soon as they're on the same page with Scott Steiner, well, now he's Rick Steiner's kid. And they acknowledge he's the son of Rick Steiner. They do an angle with Rick Steiner. And I'm just thinking, if they would have just come to an agreement with Scott like four months ago, this guy would probably be Rick Steiner right now. God! It's possible. It's possible. But still, right now, no matter what your name is, except Gable Stevenson, they wanted to change it because they want to own it. And if I'm any member of the Steiner family... And Rex Steiner is there. I am not letting WWE. But his name have isn't it. Rex or Steiner. But the whole thing is for a wrestling name, Rex Steiner kicks a lot of ass. So, like that for that reason, I could see them not wanting to go ahead and let them have that for perpetuity or whatever WWE would want it for. So I actually get that. And with WWE, this is just what they do. They give these people these names when they get into these types of situations, whether it makes sense or not. Look how many uh, people from the past whose names they've changed who are second generation people. I mean, it's happened over and over again. This guy goes, no one cares about his name. There was once a guy named The Rock. You're comparing the name The Rock to Braun Breaker with two Ks? He stole that from Don Morocco and Ole Anderson. Braun Breaker. What is a Braun Breaker? And here's the thing. When he came in, he was Rocky Johnson. Hey, are, I mean, I'm sorry. He was uh, he was uh, Rocky Maivia, yes, which was yes. playing off his history. Hey, are you going to that, uh, that taco stand that uh, uh, Stroman's working at? Uh, apparently, if he's serving margaritas. San Jose Taco and Margarita Festival. Braun Breaker's mm. working there. Maybe. Stroman. Oh, yeah, Braun Stroman. Thank you, Dom. God. He'll be serving I was all I was day. all fixing to go off, and then I heard the music. Back in a moment, Observer Live. It's Lunkhead Stroman. Legitimately thinks I'm being paid by Tony Khan. Mm. I'm not the one being paid in taquitos, brother. <laughs> Let's talk about Raw. A lot to get into on this show last night. So it opens up with Seth Rollins coming out doing his goofy act, dancing around in his stupid outfit. People say he's supposed to be the Riddler. Is that what he's supposed to be? I think he's a freak. That's why he's freaking, right? Uh -huh. Isn't that it? Oh. Well, anyway, he comes out and he calls out Cody Rhodes. And golly, Rollins talked for like an hour. And the whole point was, I wasn't ready at WrestleMania. So tonight in the main event, I want you to face someone who you're not going to know who it is, so you're not ready. Cody says, okay. That was about 25 minutes right there. A long segment. Then we had Sasha and Naomi versus Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan for the women's tag team titles. Oh, and, let me uh, say it. You'll never guess what happened. A, well, you can say that all up and down the show. So there was a uh, kerfuffle, and Liv Morgan fell outside, and Rhea Ripley got double teamed and pinned. And as soon as she got pinned, I knew she was turning. So she gets pinned. And then she gets in a big argument with Liv Morgan, beats her up, lays her out with the riptide, stomps a mud hole in her. Rhea Ripley has turned heel. It's about time. Sonya Deville and Bianca segment. 
So Sonya Deville is facing her. She was supposed to be facing her at the pay-per-view. But Sonya comes out and says, you know what would be better than beating you for that title at the pay-per-view? What if I beat you in a very special place next week, Knoxville, Tennessee, your hometown? I will beat you for the women's title. And not only will I beat you, but your family can be there and watch you lose another title quickly. So Bianca's all mad. She grabs her for the KOD. Sonya yells, put me down or you're going to be stripped and fined. And so Bianca tosses her down really hard and walks off. And so Sonya gets all angry. And she goes backstage and she's yelling at Adam Pierce and she's all complaining that Bianca laid her hands on, like, management. Which, by the way, this storyline is so stupid. Like, literally, for you, you, like, lunkheads out there, they have to explain this to you. So the story is, Sonya is a wrestler when she's in her gear. But if she's in her street clothes... She's management. So dumb. So anyway, Adam Pierce goes, well, don't worry about it. I uh, I handled this this fine. So Bianca walks up, and she's got one dollar, which she gives to Adam Pierce. That was her fine. I don't know where she found a dollar bill. My God, those things are so hard to come by nowadays. I had to find a dollar bill for Paisley's school pictures. I had to literally get my car, drive down to the grocery store, and, and it was brutal. But Break anyway, 100? Yeah, what did we feel really feel sorry for you. Bianca had a rough time. <laughs> Veer, you idiot. Veer Mahan and Jeff Brooks. Golly, how long do we have to wait for this idiot to debut? God bless him. And then he Ooh, finally Jeff Brooks? he finally debuts, and now all he's doing is squashing blokes <laughs> like he's on main event. God. Well, yeah, but they didn't get the ambulance ride on main event. I mean, give him that. At least, when's the last time we've seen the ambulance gimmick for somebody? The last old, the week. Old, they ought to give him the old Sid. Give him the Sid thing. Let him go out there with a gurney. Let him put the guy in a gurney and let him push the gurney, like, off the ramp or something like that. Do that every week. So anyway, he killed this guy. No Rey Mysterio. I guess he's, you know. He, he knows God. better. <laughs> he's getting Pat Buck's exit. <laughs> I mean, this isn't like a Dom. this isn't like a hard and fast rule, but you know there are people that you know have actually really serious, legitimate things like heart attacks, and then you know they're they're home resting, you know, in in a few days or whatever. But man, you put you put Dominic in a cervical hold; he's hospitalized for weeks. <laughs> what happened to this guy's neck? Well, do they have to take his brain out and? Then put it back in again. You got to be careful with the neck. We had the Ezekiel lie detector test. So uh, it's stupid. They have a lie detector. Yeah, Chad Gable was great, though. Yeah, Chad Gable's out there. Kevin Owens is out there. I mean, the funny thing is, like, Kevin Owens is gr- was great in this segment, and Chad Gable was great in this segment, and even Ezekiel was fine in the segment. But at the end of the day, it was like a stupid segment. It was like, it took an hour to, for the guy to go, I'm Ezekiel. I'm not Elias. And the machine says he's telling the truth. And there's like an hour long segment to lead to a match with Ezekiel and Chad Gable. Ezekiel's first ever match in storyline on Raw is his character. Three minutes disqualification. Otis runs in. Ezekiel can't even get a win. I'm like, even Veer Mahan can beat somebody. And by the way, Ezekiel's new catchphrase, I don't know what it is. But in the interview... In the interview, he says, who wants to hear Zeke speak? And then in the match, he screamed, who wants Zeke to speak? He's like screwed it up. He had one line in the interview and then one line in the match. And I'm like this. Okay, so you know what's funny? I'm going to tell you guys a story. Not a long story. But uh, they had this guy, Elias. And he played the guitar, which people liked. And he did interviews, which people liked. And he wrestled, which people didn't like. But there were two things he did that people liked. So they had an idea. Let's take those things away from this man. Let's take away his guitar. Let's take away his his uh, his beard. All everything, every aspect of his character. And they took him off TV. And he did an interview where he said. Uh, he actually said, Elias is dead. Long live Elias. He should have said Ezekiel, but they didn't know what they were doing at the time. How do I know that? Well, 
So uh, for the last, how long has he been off TV? Could someone tell me how long he's been off TV? He's been off TV for a long time. Months. So, you know, various people have been tasked with the idea of coming up with an idea to repackage Elias. And, uh, you know, they came, all these people came up with all these ideas. And then this is what they settled on. He's his own brother. He shaved. And his catchphrase is, who wants to hear Zeke speak? And he has bad matches and he doesn't play the guitar. Maybe he'll have an interview segment called Zeke Speaks, though. And then, bro, can you shave your face completely, dude? It's like all five o'clock shadowed and weird now. <laughs> then we had the Street Profits against Randy Orton and Riddle. And uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to bother. But uh, in a very heelish move, the Street Profits played the Usos' music to distract Riddle and Orton to then pin them and then brag about it. So they might be heels now. No. But I have no earthly idea as usual. No. So they got to win. So actually, it looks like it may be uh, RK Bro, the Usos, and maybe the Street Profits in a three-way to unify the titles, even though the Street Profits don't have titles. Because, hey, why not? Edge and Damian Priest. Uh, Edge, you know, talked for a long time in a room. At least he didn't say that he wants someone to knock on his door. But he is angry at the fans, because as you're well aware, everybody, it's their fault. Then they beat up AJ Styles and laid him out. We had Theory versus Finn Balor. And, I, I you know, I said, uh, you know, a while ago that Austin Theory is, you know, Vince's new John Cena. And I was ridiculed for that. But, God, did you guys watch this? It's Theory versus Finn Balor. Theory, like, you know, he looks like an action figure. But, and actually, he's not a bad worker, but they don't want him to work like that. So, it's a very generic heel match. He puts Finn Balor in a chin lock. They go to commercial. They come back. The guy's still in a chin lock. He gives him a neck breaker outside. He puts him back into a chin lock. Finn Balor gets a very basic comeback, gets cut off. Theory hits him with the ATL and wins. He wins the title. And he's the new champion. And they send out all these, you know, mid-card geeks, heels, like Aziz is out there and everybody. And they're all celebrating with Theory, and they put him on the shoulders, and he's doing this or whatever. And then they hit Vince's music, and Vince comes out on the ramp, and uh, and Theory goes up there, and you know Vince is holding his arm up, and they're taking selfies of each other. I'm like, God, this is so heavy-handed. It's so heavy-handed. This is the new chosen one. Look at this roster. Uh, look at developmental and the main roster. And, I mean, think of think of all of the guys that have left to go to AEW. Your Danielsons, your, uh, they let go of Samoa Joe, and, you know, who else? We go on forever. Moxley's gone, and... Uh, uh, Andrade, Jeff Andrade, Hardy. The, Jeff, well, Jeff Hardy was pretty old, but... Well, that's, yeah. You've got, um, you know, there's just, the list goes on and on and on. It's all, they, all these guys Ruby leaving, Solo, leaving, leaving. Yeah. But thank God we got us in theory. Like, nothing against the guy, but, I mean, there was nothing special about this match whatsoever. It wasn't good. It wasn't exciting. It was just there. But then he was coronated as, like, he's the new chosen one. This is like Vince. Ah, it's just and Vince by, McMahon, by being a goofball, man, you go back to him and evolve, like throwing Darby Allen off of things. And it's like he was more serious doing that. He had more of an attitude doing that. And that's the biggest problem with this is he's a goofy sidekick to Vince. Instead of being at least Cena had attitude. You know, that was the part of the whole deal was the whole attitude thing of what was it? Uh, ruthless aggression or whatever it is. With theory, it's a goofball who. Again, I don't know if this is really getting him off on the best start, even though he is standing there next to Vince, which is bizarre to say. Then we had the wedding, which uh, they didn't do our idea, which was Truth accidentally marrying the wrong pair. But we did, have, we did have we did have you know Truth go and uh, speak now or forever hold your peace. And Tamina spoke up. And first, she switches the men. So now she's going to marry Reggie. Then she switches it so the men are together and the women are together. And they actually teased that uh, Dana and Tamina were going to kiss. And uh, our truth you know, he cut it off because it's a PG show. These fans were furious. They wanted that kiss. So then everyone gets back together again. And the whole point of it was 
The 24-7 title is off limits during the ceremony. So, of course, the moment he announces, he didn't say they were married. He said they were now committed. (laughs) So the moment they're committed, of course, uh, Reggie tries to pin, actually, Reggie pins Brooke. Tamina pins Reggie. Tozawa pins Tamina. Dana pins Tozawa. And then Truth carries Dana to the back. But then Truth doesn't try to pin her. So, anyway, the less said, the better. It was exactly what you would expect. It was train wreck television. It was designed to be dumb. It was designed to be wacky. But the fans thought it was dumb and wacky, and so they just did chants and everything like that. And then Truth spent an hour trying to shut the fans down. But then they just kept doing it louder. I mean, this went on forever. But still, we got the rest of the show going on forever. So MVP and Omos are having an arm wrestling match next week. Can't wait for that one. Lashley. What did I say? Oh, MVP, yeah. MVP. Lashley and Omos are having an arm wrestling match. And then the main event, it's going to be uh, Cody against a mystery opponent. Fans have been waiting three hours. Rollins comes out and just goes, it's Kevin Owens. <laughs> Kevin Owens comes out. The match was good. They went se- Except the finish, of course. They go 17 minutes, and they're wrestling. They're doing all these spots. They're working hard. And then finally, Owens takes a bump on the apron. He falls off the apron. Seth on the outside says, Get your fat ass back in the ring. Kevin Owens is like, what did you say? And he's he just can't take it. He just walks out. Walks out. Gets counted out. Hey. So, Cody, another big Rhodes win via count out. <laughs> he's also upset about this. And uh, then he goes to pose. And there's like five seconds left on the show. He goes to pose. Seth sprints in, pushes him off the top. You don't even see Cody land. They do a quick shot of Cody's holding his ankle. Now just go, how do you start? And they go off the air. <laughs> I hit my time cue better than they did. Back in a moment, Observer Live. This person wants to know, where's Roman Reigns? There's no world championship on Raw. There's nothing to fight for. U.S. championship means nothing. Your thoughts? Yeah, I always thought the idea of unifying the titles was so the champion would go back and forth, but they unified the titles and he went nowhere. He's literally on neither show now. But uh, the idea is that uh, he's going to be wrestling at the pay-per-view, so they got to set something up probably on on Friday, I would guess. I think something's going to happen in that uh, Lumberjack match where, like, the Usos are going to attack Drew McIntyre to lead to Drew and Roman, because Roman is wrestling. He's not hurt. He's wrestling Drew McIntyre on the road. So he's out there. He's just not on television right now. They haven't shot an angle. So you got me, dude. I got a question for you. Yeah. Are you still a doctor of divinity? Yeah, I am. I could have done uh, that wedding. So with our truth now, as as Reverend R2 Ruth or whatever it is, so he is now one forever? Does this ever run out? Do you have to actually take courses and, and re-up every year, every couple of years? Or you just once you pass the course, you can just marry people forever? I didn't even take a course, dude. I just sent in my $35. Damn. How many weddings did you uh, oversee? I actually was going to do... What's happening here? Can no one hear me? Apparently no one can hear me. Well, luckily we got audio here on the radio. (laughs) Thank God it's a radio show. So, uh, yeah, I I was going to marry our buddy Sean, but then something came up and then I didn't do it. Thank God. I didn't really want to do it. (laughs) That's a lot of pressure, dude, to bring two lives together. Usually I just tear lives apart. Hey, we're out of time, everybody. But what you could do, though, 50 bucks, Brian will marry you via cameo. No, I won't. Oh. No, don't don't get that. Sorry. Yeah, something happened. Something went wrong there. But you know what? It doesn't matter. We're out of time, everybody. You missed nothing except Mike asking me to marry him again or something. I don't even know. But anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.